Jo Clark, and thanks so much for joining me today. This is the Redefining Midlife podcast, a podcast designed for the 40 plus woman who is determined to challenge society's myths and beliefs around midlife. It's for the woman who is inspired and ready to define midlife her way. Join me each week as I chat to health and wellness experts for up-to-date information on how to live well, as well as some special conversations with incredible everyday women redefining what midlife can look like. Here's to making our next half of life even better than the first. Stress management is one of the six pillars of wellness I focus on in my own life as well as in my Better Than Before membership for women. And in this episode, my special guest expert, Jessica Reed and I focus on the topic of stress. We cover the role that stress plays in the life of women, the effects stress has on our physical and mental well-being, particularly when it's long-term. And then we chat about the amazing stress management benefits of the technique EFT, otherwise known as tapping. This technique may be something you haven't heard of before, or perhaps you don't know much about. So it's a great opportunity to find out more information. Jessica is a mother, entrepreneur, alternative therapist, and holistic life coach from Canberra. And she's got a genuine passion for helping women live in a place of optimal well-being. Now, Jessica has experienced firsthand the depths of anxiety, PTSD, and chronic stress. And she's now on a mission to use her own experience, unique skill set and knowledge to transform the lives of other women. Jessica is highly trained as an advanced EFT practitioner, clinical hypnotherapist, advanced life coach, meditation therapist, practitioner of the trauma technique, just to name a few. And she offers a unique approach to mental and emotional well-being with a powerhouse combination of modalities that combine both body, mind and soul for deep transformational growth and healing. Now, all of Jess's details can be found in today's show notes. And without further ado, on with today's show. I would love to welcome the the gorgeous Jess Reed to the podcast today to discuss all things related to stress. And also Jess is going to be sharing with us an absolutely incredible technique that she uses with her clients to help them minimize stresses in their life. So welcome to the podcast today, Jess. Thank you. I am so excited to have this chat. I love talking about stress. <laughs> well, it's stress is something that affects every single one of us. And it is so important that we learn more about it and learn ways to manage it. In my Better Than Before membership, I've got that as one of the key pillars is to stress management. We need to look at that in order to live our best life that we possibly can. Absolutely. It takes such a toll, as we'll talk about today, I'm sure. It takes such a toll on physical, mental, emotional well-being and long-term health. So, so important that you've got that there as a pillar, as is part of your membership. Absolutely. And it's something that we all deal with to varying degrees. There's mm. We can't escape stress. I mean, and our body mm. needs a certain amount of stress in, in order to, to work well. Absolutely. There is healthy stress. Stress is not always something to be scared of, but. No, but we've got, we've (laughs) we've got a different perception of what stress is and what it isn't. And also some people have got varying uh, tolerances to stress and how their body reacts to it and how they may react to stressful situations. So I thought it'd be really helpful if we had that common language and understanding, first of all, just so Mm. everyone is on the same page. So we can learn what stress is, what it isn't, and that, as I said, the toll it can take on the body and then options we can have to manage stress. So I was just wondering, before we go into all of that depth, I wanted to share with women one of the other reasons why it's so important in our middle of life years to look at stress and stressful situations and to manage it because during perimenopause and the early years after menopause, it is something that women need to be aware of that it may be a a factor that never was in their life before, but can be present. So I'm just going to share some information that came from a study in in the British Medical Journal. And it found that one in three perimenopausal women had severe psychological symptoms compared to one in four who had severe physical symptoms, such as severe hot flushes. So, I mean, we hear about hot flushes all the time, but we don't hear about the effects it can have on our brain your mental health no absolutely no you're right you don't hear about that at all and it says further it says that women with no history of anxiety are twice as likely to develop anxiety in perimenopause and very early menopause as at any other time in their life and two to four times as likely to develop depression Mm. so all of a sudden 
in middle of life, there are going to be a lot of women who are going to present with certain mental health issues yeah. that they've yeah. never had before. So it's so important to address this, particularly in the podcast today, and learn more about it and learn a really simple technique that you're going to share with us today That's about right. how women can actually have another tool in their toolkit to deal with stresses. So first of all, Jess, can you talk about <laughs> what is stress and what isn't stress? Yeah, absolutely. Well, as we mentioned before, not all stress is negative. So we do need some positive stress in our life. We need some adrenaline hits um, and that is to help us function, right? We need that positive stress or perhaps we wouldn't go and take that test or we wouldn't be able to even um, even get through some of our daily activities because we need that stress. We need that adrenaline and that is positive stress. So not totally being scared of the word stress. Where stress becomes a problem is really, and I'm going to say, well, the recent studies that I've read show 80% of the population. So women, yes, but 80% of the population are living in their fight or flight response. And I'm going to dive into that in a moment. But that's where stress starts to become a problem because the stress response has a purpose. And that purpose is to keep us safe. It's to keep us out of danger. But the problem is the part of our brain that houses this response, the amygdala, which is, um, I guess, your brain's smoke alarm, um, it is still quite primitive. It hasn't caught up to this modern world where stress could be coming from, say, an email, a thought, a conversation, uh, anticipation, traffic lights. You know, this this modern world. So previously, the way that our brain was designed to work, and I just always use the example of a tiger, say a saber-toothed tiger, for example. You know, let's just say you were being chased by a tiger. Your stress response comes on. Your fight or flight response comes on because your amygdala, which is constantly scanning your environment for danger, and I mean your external and internal environment, which is why our thoughts can impact. <laughs> we'll talk mm. on that soon. Um, it's constantly scanning for danger. So the amygdala says, danger, danger, danger. There's a tiger chasing us. We need to survive this. So we go into typically then fight or flight or freeze or fawn, which is also a common response these days as well, which again, we can talk about what that looks like um, in a modern response a bit later. But we go into that fight, flight, freeze, fawn stage. And what happens when we're in that stage is there is a, a chemical and messaging system that is released from the amygdala down our brainstem into our nervous system that takes us into what we call our sympathetic nervous system. And that gives us what our body needs to fight or flee from this danger, right? So basically we are having changes like um, nervous system changes like uh, our pupils might dilate, our bodily functions will change. So we don't need to be having sexual function. We don't need to be reproducing. We don't need to, our digestion to work properly. Um, all of these changes, you may feel like your colon or your bladder needs to release because the body is prioritizing what it needs in that moment to survive. Your heart rate will increase. Your breathing rate will, will, will go quite shallow. And you may notice some of these symptoms in yourself when you're feeling quite stressed. We get a lot of muscle tension, which by the way is um, the body's very first sign of being stressed is actually muscle tension. Mm -hmm. So um, again, we can talk more about this, but learning how to tune in and self-awareness so you can actually identify those early stages. But going back to what stress is, we've had these changes. Their um, blood vessels have constricted so we can send oxygenated blood to the muscles that need it. We've got cortisol being released into our body, which provides our muscles with glucose so that we can run, fight, flee, whatever we need to do to escape this tiger we get an adrenaline rush to escape this tiger so in those days we'd escape the tiger and it's like ah oh, we're safe and what happens then is we go into our parasympathetic nervous system which is also known as rest and digest 
which is where the heart rate regulates, blood pressure regulates, um, you know, your digestive system regulates, sexual function recommences, all of these things happen. And we go about our normal day until the next threat comes. But what happens now in our modern world, and I mean, I'm, I can only really speak from my experience as a woman and as a mother and a, as a business owner and all the things, um, what happens in our modern world is that that clear ending to the danger doesn't happen. So we might wake up in the morning and start thinking about what we've got to do. And then we're interrupted by our children. And then suddenly we're running late. And then we know that someone might get mad at us for running late. Perhaps it's your boss or perhaps, you know, you've got a deadline to make. You don't have time in your mind. You've got all these things going on. You might encounter every set of red traffic lights along the way. Whatever your stress is, you might have... um relationship issues, financial struggles, uh, whatever stress is for you, illness, injury, there's so many places that stress can be coming from. But because of the nature of our modern world, being on the go, 24 hours a day, always accessible, really highly stimulated and really quite toxic when you think about the exposure that we have to news outlets, to social media, um, the stress response doesn't have that clear ending. Mm. So what happens is we stay in that fight or flight and you might feel that at varying degrees. But if you're in that fight or flight response continually, then those physical changes that happen in your body long-term are actually linked to some pretty hefty illnesses. A short-term, it might seem like, you know, as I said, increased heart rate, um, irritation, headaches, migraine, upset tummy, being run down. So mm. stress has a direct impact on your immune system function as well, which also impacts your, you know, your lymphatic system. So your ability to actually release toxins and waste from your body. You might feel like you're always unwell, muscle tension, headaches, migraines, feeling tired. It's massive. That's what you might feel now. So and then long term, oh my god! <laughs> no, so, and that's it. When we're looking long term, when we're looking by the time you get to your forties and your fifties, you may have been living decades yeah. in this fight or flight the whole time, and you're so darn busy that you can't, you don't stop enough to realize or notice any of the signs and symptoms of your body being stressed, and so exactly. that becomes the norm. And then you're living it's in that normal. Constant, yeah, you live. Yeah, it's in that normalized. Constant. Yeah, it is normalized, and it's almost. In society now, it, it's almost a badge of honour to be busy and to be, oh, I'm so oh, stressed. Oh, God, I've got so put much. Put the words out of my mouth. <laughs> and that's really not what we want to be. That's not the badge of honour we're after. No, no, look, it's a default, almost a default response. And you may, now that you hear this, might become aware of it for yourself or in conversations with people. How are you? Oh, I'm so busy. Yeah. Or I'm good, but I'm busy. Or um, yeah, good, really busy. Um, how is how are the kids? Oh, yeah, they're great, busy with school. How's the husband? Oh, he's so stressed and busy at the moment. It's normalized. Mm. And because living in that state of feeling mediocre, living in that state where every second person is on the brink of burnout, running themselves into the ground, particularly if you come from a corporate world, um, where that is normalized. 12 hour working days plus bring it home with you is normalized. Um, all of those things being normalized by society doesn't give a lot of people the awareness that what they're experiencing doesn't have to be that way. But not only that, it's not supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, your natural state is rest and digest. Your natural state is rest and repair. Your cells repair when you are in that state. You know, you sleep well because you have less cortisol because you're not in fight or flight constantly looking for danger. Just bring it all that stress, bring it back to that primitive safety response. Mm. If you think I'm not sleeping because I'm stressed, it is literally because if you were in the wild and there was a tiger somewhere around you, your brain is wired for survival. You are going to be on alert for danger. You also have extra cortisol levels in your body and cortisol is needed and naturally released from around 2 a.m. to help you wake up. 
And if you have these excess cortisol levels, excess adrenaline in your body, then that is going to directly impact your sleep as well. And then when we look at our long-term health, just from those physical changes that we spoke about, the changes in our digestive system, the excess adrenaline, cortisol is quite acidic by nature. You're creating this toxic environment for your cells to thrive or not to thrive. You're creating a toxic environment in your body. And I can list off just a couple of um, illnesses because there is quite a long list that are now evidence-based being linked back to stress at some point. And they're things like fibromyalgia, anxiety, panic disorders, um, loss of libido, different cancers. So some cancer cells actually have receptors on the end of them that are receptive to adrenaline. And so that excess adrenaline can actually cause the spread of some cancers. Um, IBS, ulcers, digestive disorders, heart diseases, heart attack, hypertension, you know, all these things, stroke, multiple sclerosis, joint pain, inflammation. There's, the list is huge. <laughs> like I, mm. I could probably talk the next hour just on the list of different, different illnesses long-term and that's not to say if you're stressed you're going to get all these illnesses but you do need to be aware that when you are stressed again your immune system is being suppressed because Mm -hmm. we're just in survival mode so it goes beyond I think a lot of the time we think I feel stressed and we think of it a lot as a mental thing you know we think of it as something that's happening in our head our head feels overwhelmed and absolutely there is mental health implications that are equally as important to deal with. But at the same time, we need to remember that that constant stress response is going to take a physical toll on your body. And at some point, you explained it beautifully, Joe, when we spoke uh, spoke in my podcast, you talked about health choices and you were saying, you know, it's going to start with a little niggle and that niggle might be muscle tension in the case of stress. Mm. And then it's going to start with a little bit more of a, you know, tap on the shoulder. And that might be a constant headache or always getting run down, always getting a cold. Think about the language, run down, hitting a wall, you know, think about that. It's, it's, it's stress language. Um, and then it starts to give you a bit of push. And now we've got some digestive issues. And still, you know, it's just stress is, is being overlooked as a contributor or even root cause Mm. and stress doesn't have to be you don't have to be you might be sitting there thinking oh but I have these things going on and again this is not a diagnosis process please eliminate medically you know eliminate things um professionally but don't rule out the the impact that stress will have on your body and your mind and don't sort of rule out where your stress is coming from because it's it's not just that you are experiencing a stressful situation it could be that your body is under stress from illness or injury it could be that there are repeated thoughts going on in your head and those thoughts are causing negative emotions and those emotions are keeping you in a place of stress because that amygdala that is constantly scanning external and internal environment it is looking saying oh she hasn't been feeling good for a while She's got these negative things going on. Oh, that that emotion's still there. That vibrational energy of that emotion's still there. The chemical, you know, neurotransmitters, everything's chemical in our body. So that chemical is all still there. Something must be wrong. And so then the amygdala says, danger, 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 and we're going to fight mm-hmm. or flight mode. So mm-hmm. just don't discount internally, externally, what could be keeping you operating in that place of stress. Yeah, in that constant stress cycle. It's so interesting yeah. because our body is not separate parts. We're a system that all work together. And that's, that's exactly right. Removing, yeah, it's, it's just not looking at one body part, thinking that's the only part of it. It's We're going to feel stress in one particular part of our body. It is a whole it's a whole related system. That's right. And that's the important thing that I think we all need to keep in the forefront of our mind. So now, Jess, before we chat about um, EFT and what mm. that is, is there a little bit about what got you into such an interest in this area of stress management and and the role of stress in our lives and how you can perhaps reduce it? 
Absolutely. I have a quite a personal journey actually that got me to where I am now. Um, you know, I really feel that there is power in story Mm. and what I love about what I am sharing is that I know for so many women, it's relatable. So for me, I had a buildup of traumas beginning in 2009, started with a major car accident. Um, then the trauma lived in my mind and in my body. And then from there, that was not dealt with effectively. And then I was in a really fast paced job. I was on the go all the time working 10 plus hours a day. I had then had my first child. And again, that level of stress was normalized. So everybody around me was also working the same hours. Everybody around me was also becoming run down. Everybody around me, you know, was moody, was Mm. anxious you just gotta suck um, it up and keep going exactly exactly <laughs> it's that mentality and yeah. again that normalizing mm. but what happened for me was so I'm in this state of fight or flight which I only know now upon reflection because nobody and this yeah I guess for me what is really disappointing and where one of my biggest drivers comes from in talking about the stress response and its role in health is because Nobody ever explained to me, even when I was in the state of panic disorder that I got to. So in 2017, I dislocated my knee, seemingly simple injury, um, but it led to a blood clot in my leg, which then led to pulmonary embolism in my lungs. And I then from there started having PTSD and panic attacks, which I'd never had before. Um, And basically... I reverted to this state of belief that I had learned from my car accident, that my body wasn't safe, that I wasn't safe, the world wasn't safe. And so I'm living in this state of panic, panic disorder diagnosed. (laughs) And Mm. I was trying to function. I would go to work, you know, on the outside, I was smiling. On the inside, I'd be running team meetings. And I had a team of around 40 support staff. I'd be running team meetings, totally dissociated. From my body and mind. Um, I would come home sometimes with no recollection of anything that I had said. I would be talking to people certain I was going to faint. I avoided shopping centers because the lights were too overstimulating. I had um, a diagnosis of SVT where your heart rate changes rhythm and goes up over 180 beats per minute. All of these things. Um, I had digestive issues that were investigated with these really uncomfortable tests, really expensive tests too, um, like barium swallow tests and lots of other investigations. And I ended up with vestibular migraines as well. And so my whole body literally, like, if it's okay if I swear, my whole body was like, you know, this what's happening like yeah. you know my it literally shut down on me it was it was just giving up not not to a point where it was going to collapse but to a point where it was like hello I need your attention you have things here that need to be dealt with um and I guess the traditional way that that I knew how to deal at that time the traditional pathway that I know a lot, a lot of people do take it just wasn't working for me medications didn't work for me I don't handle the side effects I stopped the last medication I had. I had one specialist say to me that if I couldn't trial a six medication, he couldn't actually help me any longer um, and discharge me from his care because I couldn't take a six medication. Um, oh. And these are ones with side effects like, oh, if you want to have more children, you know, like, so, you know, they're, they're, yeah. they're not nice medications. Yeah. Um, and I And they certainly have their place. So I want to be very clear that I know, And I completely respect that they have their place and that for some people, they are a lifesaver. And for me, I tried, I thought they were my option and it turned out I couldn't, I couldn't take them. And that was for any of the things that I was being diagnosed with. Um, So I started to feel really helpless, like really, really helpless. And after Amelia, my second child was born, my panic disorder was just through the roof. I was on maternity leave, but I was barely leaving the house. And that was just before our lockdown, our very first round of lockdown. So add the fear of the world into it. Yeah. Add the bushfires, you know, that smell of smoke that keeps you in fight or flight. Oh. Add all those things into it. I couldn't, I was barely functioning. And I didn't remember the last time I had any kind of day 
where I didn't have that awful panic response in my body from the moment I woke up. Oh, it must have been a nightmare yeah, time for you. It was awful. It was yeah. a horrible, horrible time. And then one day I, it was during lockdown, I was scrolling Instagram and I saw something about EFT tapping and I was like, you know what? I'm so desperate. I'll try anything. And I started tapping and I started to actually feel relief in my body, which was just for me unheard of. And I clung to that. I was like, something is going to help me. <laughs> I think yeah. I found something that's actually helping me. Um, and so I combined that. I had some acupuncture and other natural therapies as well. But I remember ringing my mom. I remember the day I rang her and I said, I've left the house. I've driven somewhere and I've actually had a full day where I just feel normal. And by normal, I just meant there was no panic in my body. Wow. There was, there was no, and those feelings of normalness <laughs> became more extended for me. Um, so then I, yeah, I couldn't ignore that. Mm. And I then made a choice to learn more about tapping. And at first it was because I wanted to help myself. And then a part of that process, a year long process of practitioner training and life coaching training that I thought I would just take back to my corporate job, you know, great skill to take back. there. <laughs> um, I had to work with 30 people as a part of my training. And when I realized that not only did I have the ability in this set to really hold a beautiful space for somebody, but also that I could have that kind of impact on people's lives and on their well-being. Mm -hmm. um, if you think about the flow on effect of somebody who effectively manages their stress response and you could potentially, potentially keep their blood pressure lowered, therefore potentially avoid a stroke, therefore potentially avoid death pretty good outcome right <laughs> you can help somebody get the quality of their life back yeah that's it yeah. from anxiety from panic like so yeah that's where that's how I got that's to where, where you I got am. to where you are so yeah. people you we've, we've mentioned the word tapping a couple of times and yeah. people may have heard it of what tapping is may have a vague idea may have seen it others may never have heard of this before so can you just talk through the process of what it is and the studies of, you know, because we know it works now, but we've got the science behind it, which is great. Absolutely. It's not some fluky, weird <laughs> thing on the a side. Weird, it's, weird thing. Yeah. Yeah. Which, Look, which it's got a, probably a reputation for because people yeah, don't understand absolutely. it. So just, just help us understand what it all is. Absolutely. And I think because tapping, and I will explain what it is, but because tapping does have that energetic component to it, I think that's why, if you're inclined to steer away from that sort of thing, then that's where you might get that perception or that judgment from. But EFT tapping is an evidence-based modality that is used in a lot of clinical settings as well as a lot of alternative therapy settings. So EFT is short for Emotional Freedom Techniques and it has been studied clinically for over 30 years with over 100 studies that show its efficacy um, in the areas like PTSD, stress management. It's actually been proven that in an hour of tapping, your body's cortisol levels will lower by up to 43%, which is wow. huge. Um, there are plenty of MRI scans, um, lots of evidence that shows the changes that happen in the body there's so much evidence that backs this amazing modality. And the studies that have been done, as I said, PTSD, stress, anxiety, phobias, things that are often typically resistant to talk therapy as well. Like phobias often are quite resistant to talk therapy. Therapies that encompass the body, so EFT tapping, uh, hypnotherapy, which I also have a diploma in clinical hypnotherapy as well, those areas that deal directly with the subconscious and bring the body into it, that's where you're going to get past those things that are talk resistant. Mm. A tapping is a combination of uh, basically Chinese acupressure points. So we gently stimulate these acupressure points in a sequence that has been clinically tested for over 30 years and combine that with modern talk therapy principles. So when we are tapping, it has been shown that by stimulating this sequence of acupressure points that we use, there's nine of them in a clinical sequence, 
we are sending a calming signal up to our amygdala. Remember, the amygdala is that mm. fight or flight response center. It's also the part of your brain that houses emotional association. So if you associate, for example, a dog with being frightening or a certain person or event with an emotion, we are sending calming signals to the amygdala. So by combining it with talk therapy and bringing our awareness and our focus and our acceptance as well to this issue that we have, if you can imagine we are effectively, imagine there's a chord between the emotion that you feel for an event and the thought of the event. We are effectively cutting that cord and disconnecting that link to the emotion from the thought. So we are able to reprogram our amygdala a little bit like gentle exposure therapy, but a lot, in my opinion, a lot um, easier because you don't have to touch the spider. <laughs> you know, we're, we're not actually coming face to face with the height or the plane or the spider or, or the, or the event trauma. Um, we are basically saying this event has happened. This is how I feel. And then we are diffusing that emotional charge from it hmm. and reprogramming our, our amygdala and our center for memory and learning to then go and file that as safe. And also to help you to distinguish that that thing was then. And, but right now in the here and now we're safe. Mm. And once you've disconnected that emotional attachment, and I see it all the time with clients, you know, something's happened. You absolutely know something's happened. It doesn't alter your memory or anything like that. But again, that emotional charge, fear response, that emotional stress response, that no longer has intensity. And that allows you to then take that step towards emotional freedom, to go about your day, to think about that event without going back and spiraling and being triggered You can move forward. And the more you signal safety to your amygdala that's been in a state of stress for however many years, or even likely a good portion of your life, the more we teach that safety and engage our, our relaxation nervous system, which is what's happening when we tap, the easier you then deal with stress ongoing. Because if you think about that switch between sympathetic to parasympathetic as like exercising a muscle, mm. the more you practice getting into that state, the easier you then will be able to come out of that stress state and into it um, when you do inevitably encounter more stress. It's quite amazing, isn't it? It's a simple technique. It's not going to cost you much money to learn yeah. and you can do it yourself. So it's something that you can, it, yeah, it doesn't require you to swallow a tablet basically for the no. rest of your life and or deal with some effect. And that's, again, that's something that some people definitely do need. But for those for, for those of us who may not need that as yeah. a therapy, this is something that we can get. And it's also something that everyone can access. Absolutely. And children, children right through to adults, any age, yeah. any ability, um, you know, is able to learn EFT. So I have a, a free, I mean, you can learn on YouTube. You can go and just Google mm. how to use EFT. Uh, I have a free beginner's guide that teaches you how to use the tapping points where they are and how to formulate a basic tapping structure. Tapping is a self-applied, self-soothing technique. So as you said, you can do it on your own. You don't need to go and go to regular classes. You don't need to be facilitated. The only thing I will suggest though, and this is uh, both from my personal experience and as a practitioner, is that Tapping through, there are some wonderful apps out there. Um, I also have an app. <laughs> I, have a, well, I have a program that has, you know, tapping recordings and audios and things. They are fantastic for that day-to-day self-care. Um, but the word, the global, they have to be global language mm-hmm. because you cannot tailor to everybody's individual needs. Tapping is most powerful when it's your word. So if you can learn how to string together a super basic EFT sequence, a basic, basic, um, then you can support yourself through your daily challenges and your daily emotions without suppressing them, 
without, because remember, if we suppress our emotions, what we resist persists, it's just going to linger in your body, probably mm. show up as an illness or a pain or something later uh, or an anxiety or, or something. So you can actually release, validate, sit with and clear and release things as they happen, which is going to be so fantastic for your emotional and mental health. But if you are diving into trauma, if you are diving into something that doesn't feel safe, that you know has multiple layers, I do recommend finding a practitioner. And it doesn't have to be me. Of course, I'd love to work with you, but it doesn't have to be me. Um, find somebody who you feel that you gel with. And the reason for that is that your brain and mine was the same, even though now, even now I know how to help myself, but when I need big help, I go somewhere else because yeah. your brain is going to put up a protection, which is perfectly normal. Again, we're wired for safety. So it's going to let you only go so deep and look at so much on your own before it says, "Uh, uh-uh, now we're done. And then you get suddenly distracted and clipping your toenails is suddenly more important than what you were doing. So, <laughs> so finding, finding somebody who can hold that space for you, um, a well-qualified practitioner who is trained to help you through the trauma without actually re-traumatizing you. Yes. Um, is my recommendation if you're looking to move through big things. But otherwise, tapping can be included in your daily self-care routine it can be something that you pull out of your toolkit whenever you need it and again doesn't require it doesn't require any preparation if you know how to do a basic sequence for yourself it doesn't require anything I I tell a story about how I sat behind the bathroom door in tears one night because my children were just being just more than my brain could handle you'd ask me then they were being really horrible (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but really in hindsight it was just more than I could handle at that time they were fighting mm. I was overwhelmed mm. and previously in that place of overwhelm because stress is just when we get to, we perceive something as being stressful when our brain is at a point where we feel like we're beyond what we can cope with so at that moment I was beyond what I could cope with and previously for me my fight or flight response would manifest as anger And I'd feel like I needed to yell to be heard. And I hated that part of me. Um, But instead of doing that, I tapped. I sat behind the bathroom door. I tapped and I breathed. And I let out the tears I needed to. But then I was able to engage my logical brain, my rational brain, because I'd calmed my emotional one, and deal with my children and help my children in a way that wasn't... um, you know, coming from an emotional reaction, but rather a logical response. Yeah. You can use it anywhere, anytime. So if you can do that and show up differently compared to what you would in a stress state, that's huge for a lot of people. That would be helpful in a workplace situation, in relationships, yeah. in family life, as you were just explaining then. Yeah, that's that's got a huge potential. So Jess, we're going to be lucky enough in the Better Than Before membership to have you come on and do a session with the women and, and teach. teach I'm so excited. Oh, that. we're really excited for that as well. <laughs> so if people want to learn more and and get to know what you've got to offer, you, you mentioned a free, so if you want to talk about that and then just your tapping circles because that's something yeah. that you, you offer that people so may be interested in as well. I do. So if you just want to learn how to use EFT on your own um, and, again, how to set up those basic EFT sequences so you can support yourself behind the bathroom door when you <laughs> behind your version of the bathroom door and you're right at work at your desk you know there mm-hmm. you, it's really um in in the car um you wherever you really need it you can download it's just a free pdf and there is a little bonus free video that you can link to at the end if you want to learn some of my day-to-day tips and tricks yeah um so there is that I also offer a monthly tapping circle And these are a fantastic way, no matter what level of EFT you are at, if you're completely brand new or if you're an experienced EFT person, to come along and just tap in a group of like-minded women. They are small, intimate circles. They're held every second Wednesday of an evening. Um, I'm not going to say times because I know everyone's time is different. (laughs) It is is in the evening, uh, 7.30 Canberra time at this stage, so you can sort of go and have a look at my website there, but we cover a different topic every month. So 
February's, for example, is looking at fear of success and fear of failure. We are looking at financial mindsets, creating abundance, lowering stress, uh, managing anxiety, all sorts of fantastic topics for the year. There is a new topic every month Mm -hmm. and the topic list is already up. Yeah. So you can come and join a tapping circle. It's just a once off $19 each time you come. And then from there, there are other ways that you can explore EFT with me. And one of those is through my Thrive membership, where I actually have audio libraries, EFTs, meditations, a self-hypnosis library coming shortly. And I do bi-monthly well-being check-ins with mentors and tapping circles are actually included in the Thrive membership. So there's those. Um, But if you're ready for some deep transformational healing and you really desire that elevation that release that self-expansion because you know that you're ready to shed whatever it is that you've been holding on to that I also have a one-on-one space too excellent well thank you for that Jess and I'll put all the links in the show notes so people can access the information when they need to as well yeah no really appreciate that um Jess just a couple of more questions before we wrap up yeah what do you your your Approaching the second half of your life now, what are you most looking yeah. forward to? We're changing direction well and truly by the sound of that. So, <laughs> I love how Jess are you aware with that? Yes. You're okay, thanks for that. Right now, on to the next. <laughs> I'm really interested to know, like, you've got this, you've got these great well-being things happening in your own life. Mm-hmm. So you're in a good place compared to where you were 10 years ago, five years Massive. ago, three years ago. So you yep. imagine if you were like that now going into the middle half of your life, that, that would be just horrendous. So you're in a different headspace, physically, yep. mentally as well. Like you're, yep. you're feeling you're a new person, basically. Yeah. What are you looking forward to? Oh God. Life. Yes. Yeah. I'm looking yeah. for I'm looking forward to life. Um, I'm looking forward to health. And that's a big one for me. I mentioned the car accident. It came with injuries. The knee dislocation, the pulmonary embolism, all those awful things that happened beyond that, which, as I said, nobody ever explained to me that I could go and facilitate a nervous system uh, regulation and do that regularly to help come out of panic. Um, So for me, health is such a big one because Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to a healthy life where I feel happy, where I know that I no life is perfect. When I had some extreme grief last year, you know, shit happens. It's life. We're all going to have to deal with whatever comes our way. But I have some brilliant tools to help me along that way. Um, So I really am looking forward to life. And I guess coming into the second half of my life with this business that I have as well, I'm looking forward to impact because I know the power of this work and the power of these tools. And I know what it's capable of for other women, for my children. You know, yeah, you can't see me because I'm smiling right now. (laughs) I'm looking forward to life. Oh, that's brilliant. I love love hearing all of that because where you were and where you are now, it's so different. You've got a lot to look forward to. And knowing that you can help other people. Yeah, Mm -hmm. knowing that you can help other people be where you are now. That's that's a pretty important gift that you can share with people. Absolutely. There's something that just keeps running through my head and that is, um, oh, it's really based on gestalt therapy practices, but uh, principles, but it is that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Mm. And, you know, and that is so true. And I really feel that, you know, yes, I had some awful struggles and I'm sure you can relate to this, Joe. you know, you, we've been through what we've been through, but it's led us to this place where, we can have this positive impact on others. And so looking back, I don't actually think that I would redo the fear, that I would redo the awful experiences because the privilege that I have now to be able to share that just really shows that the yeah, the whole, the big picture, the the whole of the whole of everything is so much greater than the sum of my parts. And I can share that with beautiful women. I can share that with my children and I get to have a fantastic life because of that. Yeah, whatever has happened in your life has led you to where you are now and will lead you to where you're going to be going next. So that's, 
Yeah, that's pretty special. It and is. keeping that in mind, Jess, as well, and have you got people that you see as you know models in your life, midlife models to to go, yeah, I'd like to be like that as I as I move into this part of life. Absolutely. Well, you are one of them. Oh, you, you said something to me earlier today. Um, oh. You said something to me earlier today and it was just talking about how moving into that next part of your life is like pro-aging. It was that it's exciting and that there is so much possibility. And I watch you, Joe, and I watch how much fun you have and I watch just how much you are embracing not your age, your day-to-day life. Hmm. Age is a number and I love that. So you are absolutely one. Um, my mother would be another one. She's also 55 next month and she uh, she's a school principal. She's a pole instructor. She is a go-getter, <laughs> absolute go-getter. Um, she's fit. She prioritizes her well-being um, and she's a beautiful woman inside and out. And I know I shared, we chatted earlier and I shared that when she turned 40, she cried. But looking at her now, age isn't a factor in what she wants to do. Yeah, She wants to be a brilliant pole instructor and she is a brilliant pole instructor, you know, alongside of her very esteemed professional career. So she inspires me too. There are other women as well, but yeah, you two definitely come to mind. I just love being in the presence of women who are, who are just so I don't know the words you can see my hands I'm trying to I'm trying to show you with my body language and that doesn't work for a podcast <laughs> <laughs> oh just not self not self-assured that's not the word I'm looking for but again who are just living life because they're living life mm. having fun and doing things that they want to be doing knowing that they have every right to be doing what they want to be doing. That's what inspires me. Oh, that's so lovely, Jess. And thank you for your kind words. That's, yeah. I'm very touched by that and it means a lot. It really does mean a lot. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take welcome. all of that. And uh, <laughs> and your mother also, I had the pleasure of meeting your mother oh, back in September and she, yeah. she, she's an incredible woman. So you're lucky you've got <laughs> someone so close to you. To be I think I should tell her I talked about it twice today. <laughs> I think so. I think mothers need to hear just how special they are. Yes, absolutely. Just just to, to, to wrap up, a question that I always ask my guests is that if you could look into the future, what do you hope 80-year-old Jess will say about current day Jess? Oh, goodness me. I would hope 80-year-old Jess would say... that she really just did her very best. You know, that she just looked forward whilst being in the present. Now that doesn't really make much sense as I say that out loud, but I just mean that she was always doing her best to be living the life that she wants to be living and creating what she wants to be creating. Yeah. The best, the best is I really feel like what you can ask for from anybody in any situation. It's just, I, and I know right now that I am giving everything my all. What is, you know, possible within me to be giving out. So I would hope that 80 year old would look back on me now and go, yeah, I'm proud of her. She did her best. I'm sure she will. I've got every confidence that she will. Jess, I really appreciate the time that you've spent with us today talking about your area of passion, how it can help people. I know firsthand how tapping works because Jess has done some sessions with me and I've got that tool in my toolkit now to be able to draw on at any time. And it is certainly something that if you're interested in exploring, I really do encourage you to have a look. It may be for you, it may be not, but at least have a look because what Jess has got and what she can offer can be um, very, very important to you in your mental well-being and physical health going forward as well. So thank you so much today, Jess, for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Joe. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.
Thanks so much for listening and sharing your time with me today. I'd love you to hit subscribe on Apple Podcast or your favorite podcast app to keep spreading these empowering messages. Please share this podcast with other incredible midlife women in your world. Join me again next week for another redefining midlife conversation. Thanks again for tuning in.